Oh then, my YouTube friends, another hook. We ask ourselves, why did this toilet clog? It's a Kohler, it's the latest design. It's the one on a TV commercial where they pour the half a bag of dog food down it and it flushes. What's going on? It's not a bad design. It's a very good design by Kohler. These are good toilets. But there are parts inside, rubber parts, just like that plunger, that deteriorated over time. There's the flapper that could deteriorate over time. Let's take a look in the tank. There's the old flapper. You can see it's supposed to be a bright red color, nice and clean. Yet this one is almost turned to a pink and there's a lot of like mildew black stuff around it. This toilet takes a very specific flapper. It's called a class five flapper. Class 5 flapper. It's very specific, nothing else is going to fit, so you got to make sure you have the right flapper. Often you will find that issue in toilets, although most take a universal flapper. There are a lot, especially colors, that may not necessarily take this Class 5, but they take different color flappers, and like the Toto and stuff like that will take their own special flapper. So we don't really even have to turn the water off for this. Basically what we're going to do is reach in there, unhook the ears from the black plastic here, and they're just on with holes there, you see those holes? We're going to hook both ears, we're going to take this clip off the flush arm, okay? We're going to count the links on the chain, on the old chain, and on the new flapper we're going to count the links and put the clip in the same spot, and then we're simply going to reinstall the new flapper in place of the old flapper. Hook the chain to the flush arm, and that swap will be done. When the old flapper is bad, and it's waterlogged, and the rubber has deteriorated, which generally they say five to seven years, and you have to replace these flappers. What happens is, when you put the flush lever to flush, that flapper is supposed to float up, let all the water in the tank down to give you a good powerful flush, and then close. But when they're waterlogged and deteriorated, they flap up and they close prematurely. So you get like half the water in the flush that you're supposed to get, and then your toilet starts clogging up. So not only did we unclog this toilet, we're going to replace the flapper to bring back the original design flush from Cola, which is a very nice flush. This is a low uh, water consumption toilet, a 1.5 gallon per flush toilet. Although Kohler spent a lot of time designing it and came up with one of the best designs uh, because it, as many of you with these 1.5 gallon flush toilets know they constantly need the plunger um, and most people keep a plunger right next to the toilet where in the old days with the 5 gallon flush uh, you know people didn't uh, they hardly ever clogged okay so let's uh, let's get this new flapper in so first I'm going to open this up. I'm not even going to shut the water off on this because it should only take like 30 seconds and, uh, and I'll have this new flapper, this new Kohler Class 5 flapper in there. So uh, we're going to reach in, we're going to take the old one off the ears of the flush valve, which is this black plastic piece, carefully too because we don't want to like break anything when we're in here. That's one side off. Second side is off. Take the clip off the flush arm. Again, we're going to count the links. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen links to the clip. Seventeen to the clip. Take the new one. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 17. So we have to move the clip. When I move a clip, I don't like to leave a lot of excess chain because there's a chance it could uh, tangle on something or, or get twisted around the other chain. So, but I do like to leave one or two links in case I have to make it longer. But I'm definitely going to take like these five extra links off. Just uh, like you saw, just open up with a plier. Okay, so now I'm going to put these. Uh, on the ears and I'm going to hook the chain 
And uh, one thing I want to do though at the bottom of this flush valve is just run my finger around where the flapper seals against that black plastic because oftentimes when these old ones deteriorate they leave chunks of rubber on what they call the flush valve seat which is the rim at the bottom there. That will cause a bad seal with the new flapper and uh, give you a running toilet. So reach in here carefully and just slip these over. They go on easier than they come off. But it is a little tight in here. Okay, that's that. If you happen to knock this hose off, it goes inside there. That's called your rim feed hose. That's what gives the water around there. Rim of the toilet, when it's filling up, that helps clean things up. It's important to keep it where it belongs. And now we're going to put the clip on the flush arm. We're going to let it fill up and we're going to uh, test it. Oh, that looks just fine though. Old one. Rubber is very deteriorated, discoloring. It's almost white at the edges here. Uh, this is like some slimy black stuff. And underneath, you can see where it seals away from it. Because this normally wouldn't have water here, so it wouldn't have the chemicals that are in the water and the minerals. And that's uh, almost the original color. But where water does touch it, you can see it has deteriorated. It becomes heavy and waterlogged and it closes prematurely, preventing a full flush. All right, great. Now, the one thing I notice is the water level is a little high. It's right up to the top of the overflow where it should be like a quarter inch below it. So that would be an issue with this fill valve here, which on this toilet is very easy to change. And I'm going to show you. It's basically a 400A, which is like a universal type fill valve. And uh, they're very easy to change because we don't even have to take the shaft out from underneath. I'm going to show you that in a second. But first I want to give it a test flush. Oh, very nice. You hear that cola chugging away? So for this, we're going to have to shut the water underneath. I'm going to install my lid carefully. A replacement lid for this toilet. Not only would it take weeks to get, but it's going to cost a couple of hundred bucks. But for this, for changing the fill valve, okay, flush valve, fill valve, for changing the fill valve, we have to shut the water underneath or it's going to shoot up to the ceiling. Take that rim feed hose I showed you off. At the bottom shaft of this fluid mask, the 400, you can see it's basically the same thing. It's just a different color cap. What I'm going to do is reach down in the water and I want to lift this locking ring up. Then I'm going to slide. Okay, so I'm going to reach down in the water down with my hand to this ring. I'm gonna slide it up, it's the locking ring. Then I'm gonna slide this whole thing into two pieces. I'm gonna, this is gonna stay in the tank because it's hooked up to the pipe that goes to the wall. All I'm gonna do is slide this off, slide the new top one on. I'm paying attention to the height so I get it right. It's about uh, half an inch below the edge of the bowl. I'm gonna make sure that my hose stub is oriented towards the uh, rim feed hole, the overflow, and I'm going to slide this down to the same height and then I'm going to reach down and I'm going to lock that ring. Because um, if you don't lock the ring when you turn the water back on, this whole thing is going to shoot up like a rocket and the water is going to hit the ceiling. So, I told you what I'm going to do. Let me show you. Reaching in, there's the lock ring. This part of the toilet is clean water. You don't have to worry about stuff. That bottom part of the toilet, the bowl, I would never be sticking my hands in there without gloves or something. Okay, we lifted it up. Here it comes, okay? This has got a little water in it, so let me just empty it out. Take your new one, make sure the ring is unlocked. I'm gonna orient that hose stub, the rim feed hose, pointing towards the overflow. I'm gonna push it down until I'm about a half an inch below the edge of the tank like we showed you and uh, I'm gonna lock the ring. If the ring doesn't lock you could turn it a little bit and it'll once it finds its spot it'll lock. That's it the ring is locked this is locked on there. We're gonna put the new rim feed hose in the bag they give you a little clip for the rim feed hose to keep it in there. 
So uh, I like to hold this and push this hose on all the way. It's very easy. Check the length. This is about right. So all we have to do is push this on this end all the way and then open this clip up kind of. Okay, open that up and just slip it over the overflow. You can see the water is going to shoot right in the rim feed. Let's turn the water on and double check everything. Oh great. So uh, hey. Hello. So as we watch this thing and listen to it fill up, I just showed you like the coolest way to replace a fluid master 400 a flush valve without doing a lot of work. Because we'll, if it wasn't for that, we would have had to take the supply line off the uh, shutoff valve off the bottom of the shank that sticks through the bottom of the tank. We would have to take the nut off of here, uh, drain the tank completely with a, a cup, a plastic cup, and then when it gets really low with a sponge or, or else put a bucket underneath and let the water go in a bucket. So it's, uh, it's a little messy. And, uh, and really this is just a plastic piece uh, which really almost never goes bad. So I would say like every other one you could do this way, but uh, I wouldn't do like three in a row. I would definitely want to replace this after uh, after a couple. I would also want you to inspect the supply line. This is a solid brass supply line. Hardly ever fails, but you'll find in a lot of houses they have those flexible stainless steel supply lines, which are just basically a rubber hose with a stainless steel braid over them. They only last like you know five or six or seven years, and then there's a good chance they could burst and make a flood in the house. So indeed, if there was a flexible supply line here, I would change it at this point. Although I still may not take the shaft out of the tank, which entails draining the tank and all of that stuff. But I would definitely replace the supply line when I replace the Fluid Master 400A and the flapper. Now we're simply going to adjust the water level. You can see it's spilling over into the overflow and it's still running. So this would just keep running and running. It's never going to stop. What we have to do is, I'm going to show you on the old one because it's easier, float arm here. We're going to turn this screw and make this float lower so that it trips at a, at a lower point and shuts the water off. So I like to hold the arm with one hand so I don't put any extra stress on it and uh, see which way you got to turn it. Make about the flow about half inch lower. I'm just going to gently trip the flap a little bit to lower the water level enough to get to trip this to start filling up again, and then we're going to watch where it uh, fills to. Okay, it's shut off, but right at the top of the overflow. I don't like that, so I want to give myself a little more, a little more room there. So again, holding this and uh, another turn. I want to get it perfect. I don't want any callbacks. Callbacks just eat into your profits. You just got to make sure it's right before uh, before you leave. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now we can uh, put our lid back on. We can give it a big flush just to check it. Very nice. This filling up here is from that rim feed hose that we put in the overflow. That's where that level comes up. And when that's got a good level that is designed at, it adds to the efficiency of the flush. Flapper is definitely important and fill valve is really important. I don't like doing toilets unless I do the flapper and the fill valve at the same time. I almost never just do one part or the other. It doesn't pay. As long as you're doing it, your head's in there, even if you're just a it's just going to be a big time saver for you rather than just do like the flapper and then, you know, Murphy's Law three weeks later the thing's going to be running and running and it's actually a fill valve too and you should have done both at the same time because now you got to get back in the, you know, all your tools, get all your attention up here in the toilet and 
fix the fill valve that you could have done two weeks ago with a minimal amount of extra work. So uh, I just like to do everything in the tank in one shot. And then I know it's good for the next five to seven years without any issues. So look guys, thanks for watching. It's the Handyman Zone channel. My name is Dino Pinch. Sub now because it really helps me with this YouTube gig and I know I just helped you out with this information here to replacing a 400A and doing a Cola Class 5 flapper. Uh, so the comment box below is there for you guys. Any questions or comments, put them there. If I can't answer them uh, because I don't have time because I get, uh, you know, 70, 80 uh, inboxes a day from uh, my YouTube channel and I can't, I just can't deal with it. Uh, there's other viewers that will be more than happy to, uh, to help you out. So thanks for watching and have a nice day.